Hi guys, welcome to a new episode of my prehistoric road trips. This time we've travelled all the way to France to visit the largest group of Neolithic standing stones in the world. Karnak is a commune beside the Gulf of Morbihan on the south coast of Brittany. It lays between the Iberian Peninsula and the western areas of Celtic Britain and Ireland. As you can see behind us, what we have is we have rows and rows of stones, it's called the alignment, and um, we don't really know what was going on here, but, um, you know, it was thousands of years ago, and we can make lots of um, suppositions of what possibly was going on, but this is unique in the way it's laid out in the processions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you in, we're gonna have a walk around, and we're gonna sort of see what it feels like. I think one thing more than anything, you can actually just feel time walking among these stones. One of the values of coming this time of year is that you can actually walk among the stones. There's a fence that goes all the way around and um, they have so many thousands of tourists to this site that um, they try and uh, protect it a little bit from the footprint of all them people. But in January the gates are open and um, you can actually walk through. I'm thinking that you're getting a little bit of the idea of what this place actually feels like. Between over 150 sites in Karnak, there are over 10,000 standing stones. Right next to the alignments is this dolmen, Dolmen de Camario. Nothing like casting yourself back a few thousand years, wouldn't you say? So as much as this is a fantastic dolmen, I want to take you and show you some with some ancient carvings in that are covered over. ourselves another burial chamber. I think I'm on the right track because there's a sort of a track. You can tell people have been walking around here. And you never know, we may find an entrance. We're looking for Tumulus de Cacado. Yes, I do believe we have. As you come in here, what you'll notice 
is there are some kind of lines that are quite obvious channels and in certain respects you could say I'm just seeing things but actually as we go further in for example here there's even a light so they put the lights on for us what you have here look you have a line coming down here that meets this line going across the bottom and then you have a couple of arches coming up this way in some respects it looks like with this soft curve coming around the back the back of an animal leading into the leg i could quite happily find myself believing that this was going into the underbelly of maybe a deer up here but i don't know and then as we go in here if we do turn the light on if it will work no it doesn't but we seem to be getting on all right and up here what you've got is you've got the same lines again. You can actually feel it smooth underneath my finger. And then there's like a block grid work going on. All the way down here, look. Sectioned off like this. And once again over here what we have is slightly different. This is more of a D-shaped line. And then more over here. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but under the finger that's super smooth. It's, it's not graffiti. This has been done a long time ago. Maybe you can comment and tell me what you think you're looking at. This is quite interesting. respects it looks like a, a head here either looking upwards or looking backwards I don't know there are signs of a little bit of modern graffiti about but massive great big capstone over the top I told you I'd get you into some interesting places there's a big um, standing stone up the top there we'll go and have a look at now. Then I moved along and I did get a rather nice surprise at this place. This is Dolmen de Main Cario and um, well let's see what we find out here. Once again, when I first walked in and I saw some things on the wall, I thought I was looking at modern graffiti, if you see what I mean. But actually, I think what we're de dealing with here is potentially a depiction of snakes. And um, well, the wall behind us, we need to, we need to get to this. Um, I don't know where to go first, they're both exciting. to know what to make of that isn't it and then to the left of it sorry to the right of it where's this going on
And we're not even in the main chamber. The main chamber's ahead of us. And as we start to advance, we're getting a lot more going on as well. I mean, look at this. That, I assure you, is not graffiti. This is pecked. Now in the main, this is a large chamber. And as you can see, it continues. More over here still. Your eyes kind of have to tune into it a bit. interesting I don't entirely feel like I'm alone in here trying to get some distance on that so you can see it It's caught our old. It's, um, feels like about minus one. I think it's um, actually about two degrees here. I've been riding for about an hour and um, I've brought you to a particularly special dolmen in France called uh, Piers Plates, uh, just outside of Carnac in Brittany. And this particular dolmen is called an Ali Coudi, um, which is a long passage which then changes direction and uh, goes off at a slightly different angle and then it also has a little chamber as well but what's really special about this particular dolmen is it, had so, it has some really interesting carvings in there as well capstone at the entrance here but then as we go in you can see there's quite a good scale to this here we have the little side chamber and um, I can't actually see any carvings in this section. But as we come on around this corner here, what you can see, first of all, these kind of appear like little cup and ring marks. And then really well pronounced once again. I keep banging my head. If we have this. Quite a lot like um, Gabrinus in some respects, just there. And as you go further in, you can see that. Um, Markings. This is somewhat like a fish in some respects. I go around in, and then you can see this here once again, a bit like what we saw earlier. It was quite wet. 
and then we're right at the end of the chamber here. Well, that is fantastic all by itself. I've now moved on to a place uh, called Loch Merrier and um, in front of me what I've got is I've got a probably the largest, well definitely the largest megalith I've ever seen. It's fallen and it's in now in four parts. Um, let me show you what I'm looking at. It's over 20 metres in length. They say that it was, um, fell due to an earthquake. There were carvings on these as well. This is just one. And um, there you can see it's standing place. Then along here, what you have is you have a procession of where other stones were. And we have two other very important sites here as well. But what's super impressive about this is the distance it was transported. This was transported from about 10 kilometers away. <laughs> it doesn't even bear thinking about, does it? The site that I have in front of you has, um, it's called the Table de Merchants, which um, actually has some seriously impressive carvings inside. And that's what we're going to have a look at right now. Bear in mind that I've never been in here before. Um, I've just watched the um, I've just watched the video in the museum that's behind me, and um, I'd researched this place before I came here, and got quite excited because up on one of the big uh, slabs in the roof, there's um, a pecked out image of a stone axe. When this place was first discovered. It actually looked like a table and that's where it actually got its name and that was literally all that was there now as we look this is a uh, reconstruction of how they um, visualize that the whole thing was originally and take you on in here as we go in, what you're going to begin to see is you're going to see these um, carvings that remain on the wall. And um, there's two particular carvings that have really drawn me to bring you in here. And I suppose we'll start off on the roof. You can see kind of appears like legs and feet there, really. But then we're moving on. What we're moving on to is we're moving on to this axe, which is up this far end here. This will be the tip of the axe head coming back, and then it curves around and the handle going down in that direction. We're looking at this huge panel at the end here. Um, the lighting, the artificial doesn't, lighting doesn't help me, me a lot here but what you're basically looking at is you're looking at what's been described as kind of like shepherd's crooks All said and done, I think you can understand why I came here. Um, really wanted to get to see this. And um, I wanted to see that huge, great big man here that was laying out there because, um, I mean, that all by itself is colossal, you know. Now, so what you're looking at here 
is quite breathtaking because this is a passage grave for one person. I can't even begin to think who this person was, but it goes right down to the um, stone down the bottom there, all the way up here. And there was one kind of cave bit in the middle where a single person was buried. You know, the skeleton no longer exists that had um, decomposed. I think they've got enough evidence to know that he was in there. But that is substantial. It's amazing, isn't it? Each one of these things is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, all by themselves and what you've got here is a collection of three of them together um, I just can't believe them really but uh, particularly the uh, standing stone 10 kilometers they dragged that over 400 tons I mean how do you even think about that um, anyway it's getting cold very cold and I need to head back to my digs now try and get myself warmed up and some hot food inside me before I set out once more tomorrow um, but in another direction so we'll see what I can bring you then